Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Tonight we come to you in high definition from the studios of Access Sacramento. Now, here's your host, James Just. Today is Lee Welker, producer, executive producer of Libertarian Counterpoint, and Mike Giles, the education, retired education. Some, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to us. Thank you guys for showing up today. Um, let's talk today about AB5. Um, the AB5 stories. There's a website out there where people have put in, inputted their stories about how the devastating AB5 is to their personal lives. And have you, have you guys heard about the impact AB5 has been having? Well, I've been hearing it through the grapevine. Different people um, who are, whether they be Uber drivers or actors, or part-time journalists, journalists, part-time um, college instructors. They're all getting, I can't use the word, but they're yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the size Abused. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the size and I think people understood, Bill understood how many people was actually going to be impacted of this. I think even medical fields have become, have been impacted on this. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, that, oh yeah, in fact they're, uh, per diem nurses are ha, used to be pretty common, but uh, maybe not anymore. And I have to ask, who benefits from this? Be, who understands or doesn't care about our Constitution, First Amendment, freedom of association, or not, right? Yeah, I, I can't even comprehend. I mean, the California State Legislature has gone over the edge so far that um, I couldn't even imagine what, who they thought they were helping. Yes, but even then, based on what reading I've done, they're scrambling to find out how can we fix this? How can we modify it and excuse yeah, they're, they're, this group or excuse <laughs> that group? Yeah. Or, yeah, they're creating all kinds of exemptions and, and carve-outs. And isn't that kind of pointing out the point that maybe your whole approach was flawed? If you have to create carve-outs for this group and then that group and then this group, then there's kind of flawed if musicians get a carve-out and and you know, um, journalists get a carve out, and then you've got truck drivers also need a carve out, oh, and, and Uber drivers need a carve out. It, it just goes beyond, keeps on kind of building beyond. It's kind of reached a point where, <laughs> did these people even understand what they were doing, or did they even care? Aren't our elected officials gig workers? No, they're not. Well, yeah. You mean they're full time? Oh yeah, they get nice and full time. Now the interesting thing is, I was reading an article the other day about how um, campaigns, some campaigns are actually having an issue with, with people they hire as part-timers oh, to come course, on. consultants. Cons well, not just the consultants. Consultants can get hired under contract, but it's the people who actually maybe work for the consultants. Um, so you end up having to do these things where you're actually spending more money having to hire an actual company to do something that one person used to be able to do. Yeah, or like the folks at the post office with the petitions, right? Mm -hmm. Dollar a signature or whatever. And, Craziness. And nobody knows. A lot of these times is, well, they don't actually qualify under, the, under that particular law. They're, they're, they're allowed to do that under a different law. But we don't have lawyers to sit there and tell us that, right? An average person doesn't have a, a team of lawyers to say, no, you're fine under this one because this law over here says you're, you're good. How is anybody supposed to be able to do that? I mean, there's something that's roaring across the internet, at least here in California, and there there used to be a big uh, celebration at, at Lake Tahoe once a year. Yeah. That's all been blown out of the water. Yeah, that's uh, actually kind of our, our next topic. We're going to talk about how, the, <laughs> how that is, is actually impacting cultural events. Is We've heard that there's all kinds of them. Here in Sacramento, a, a local theater group has cut back their, their events because they can't afford to do the full schedule and so they're only between two like half shows where they only have half the crew because they can't afford to pay a full crew that they were going to have a big huge huge production but they can't afford it anymore so now they've gone to scaled it back. Oh man it's beginning to sound like the old Soviet Union um, how there's a lot of government control over everything and the more the government controls it the more inefficient it gets. Yes, it's, yes, that's right. Strong, the, the ultimate of which is the uh, Chinese Communist Party where everybody has to think the same way and if they don't, yeah, they're they, gone. Yeah. Well, if you, don't, yeah. if you don't say the right things, if you don't do the right things, you don't get your exemption, right? That's kind of how things are going now, which brings us back to the question Lee had a minute ago, is who's benefiting from this? And a lot of people are blaming unions, but I'm beginning to wonder, you know, are unions actually the ones being shaken down in this whole whole deal? You, 
you know, are the unions the ones being shaken down? Instead of the other way around, we kind of thought it was the unions wagging the tail dog, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the unions are the ones getting shaken that, down. That's something to think about. I, um, I mean, it's certainly not below consideration that, that the actual unions themselves are, some of maybe the favored unions are getting good treatment, other unions are getting... Yeah, we'll pay um, your money and we'll give your, your, your group an exemption. <laughs> Because that seems to be how it's going. It's, it's certain union groups are getting exemptions and others aren't. Even, the, even union groups aren't getting exemptions. And wow. so it's, it's are they paying, it's, it almost seems like are they paying off the politicians to get their exemption? It's hard to, it's hard to know sitting out from out here. It's, you know, we all like to blame a lot of the times the unions are kind of controlling the legislature, but I'm not entirely even sure that's true anymore. Well. I have a, uh, my, my memory goes ways back. It's not perfect by any means, but I recall a time when volunteers were prohibited. You have to get paid minimum wage in order to do this, that, or the other thing. You cannot volunteer. But uh, I think there's some, been some uh, exceptions to that. Oh, man. Uh, when, when the trash collectors go on strike and people show up to... Neaten up the neighborhood a little bit, get rid of the stench, yeah. collect the dog waste, <laughs> or is it or animal waste, other any waste. species? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. somebody's going to be griping at somebody for doing good. Yeah, for, for taking your job. If you feel, someone goes around and uses a, a rogue pothole filler, so they've got these guys now who go out. I was reading a story just the other day about some guy who went out and was filling potholes. And, and had like a bucket there for people to pay him. And he could say, yeah, all kinds of stuff. People were giving him joints and money and, and, wow. <laughs> and, and, okay. and bottles of wine and you know, lunch and all kinds of stuff. For filling, just, he was just filling potholes. Wow, and, that's interesting. And so, but you know, he did more to fill a pothole in just a few days than the city seems to do in, in months. Yeah, I, actually I see, first of all, I live kind of on the far end of Watt Avenue and until you have the road um, memorized, you're going to be hitting oh, yes. bad, bad, Pretty bad, evil, isn't bad, it? bad, um, you know, potholes. And the stereo in my car only works part of the time because you hit a bad one and then it quits <laughs> working. And then and next tomorrow, the next day, it starts working. You again. hit another pothole and it fixes it again. Yay! But then <laughs> once in a while, you see some of the holes have been, been filled. But obviously, the government didn't go on and do that. It's like people have been just coming up and doing yeah, it you real quick. The, and parts, you do it re the loose parts from the car probably <laughs> fell into it. Yeah. Well, yeah. you do it real well. Uh, you know, a poorly filled pothole is still better than an unfilled pothole, right? It's, yeah. I mean, there's a spot out there off El Verde Road where there's about 100 pieces of broken pavement about this big uh, laying off to the side where it's just been breaking off and, Ouch. you know, and... Uh, it's it's a dirt area, so they just get bounced over into that area. But um, these government people just don't seem to be actually doing the job. <laughs> yeah, well, they're if they're focusing on controlling how people want to work and and how how controlling how people want to interact with their with their employers or the people or how they gain revenue, uh -huh. rather than actually doing the basic jobs of of you know filling potholes and making sure our schools are decent or. Or you know the various this the basic things that we actually want our, our politicians to do is schools, roads, you know, police, fire, and, and mm -hmm. these, the the five basic you know the four or five basic things that we all that we all kind of agree on. Even those even those libertarian extremists, you know, kind of agree well, on that we, we want them to do. have to debate it a little bit every now and again. <laughs> but <laughs> we all kind of want that. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, absolutely one hundred percent opposite to a very positive surprise that I discovered when I went back up to my Central Oregonian homeland uh, after I graduated high school down here. And it turned out that there was a school board meeting. And the school board had said, hey, you know, there's six deaf kids in town. We want to build a little school with some kind of primitive computers in those days mm -hmm. and help them learn how to speak. And uh, there was a resounding, no, we are not going to uh, spend public money on this. We're going to build the school ourselves. We're not going to charge the school district. The, so what a wholesome attitude. Yeah, mm -hmm. so lumber people, plumbing people, everybody, they just went out and volunteered and built the school. 
Yeah. That yeah. would be illegal in California, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and, and, the, and I went and saw it afterwards. And the person that was the teacher was recruited, it was Vietnam War era, out of L.A., and they gave him a county um, kind of special registered special home to live mm -hmm. in. It was a historic home off by the river. You can live in this home for free. Uh, Terrific. And so the people there wanted to help, and they didn't want the government to get in the way and grab people and take their money and push people around and say you can't drive an Uber or whatever, you yeah. know. Well, I think one of the things is government money comes with government strings, right? And so it's, they don't want the government strings. It's like, well, we know that it's going to cost three times more at least, and there's going to come strings with that. And so if we can be, have some freedom, we can actually accomplish something more. But there's something about that bothers me. It's been bothering me for a long time. We'll see a proposal. California government wants to spend a million dollars on this because that qualifies us for $4 million in federal money. Well, who in the heck is providing the federal money? Yeah, it's not federal money, it's taxpayer money. Yeah, well, right. and it's an it, insurmountable jet at this point. Yeah, when are we gonna, ever gonna pay off the trillions of dollars, 20 some trillions have, of dollars? It's, it, nobody seems to care that all the babies that are just being born them and their children are going to have to pay off this monster debt that everybody's just riding free on. Hey, we can just borrow more money. Yeah, that's what I love. I, I may be premature here, but uh, that was one of my favorite uh, scenes from the 2016 presidential campaign. Bernie Sanders, the communist in, in effect, uh -huh. promised free this, free that, free something else. And People sort of listed it and they said, well, how do you propose that we pay for it? He says, it's easy. The government's going to pay for it. <coughs> oh, oh, right, oh. right. Thanks a lot. The government's going to pay, huh? Yeah, well, it's like, you know, free. We wanna, we're going to spend a million dollars so we can get $4 million from someone else. But you still got a million dollars to spend that you don't have, right? Even if you get, okay, so the government, will, the feds will give you $4 million extra dollars, but you still have to come up with the first million. Right, and so you you still that, spending four money. Million, when, you know, so we really, in essence, you're stealing a million here, so you can get four million that's been stolen by somebody else from everybody else. It's, yeah. It's just so you're gonna get some poor, so some poor person in Pennsylvania gets to help pay for your California program. Why is that a good thing? Yeah. It, why should they have to pay? <clears throat> or you know, I mean, it's 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 in. I mean. Most, I'll just use the word insane. Well, especially here in California, since so much things are more expensive. You know, your dollar doesn't go as far in California as it does in, say, Kansas. And so we're actually going to be charging more. In a sense, we're actually paying, when we do that federal money, we're actually transferring some of our high cost of living to taxpayers in Kansas and, and these other places. And it's, not, it's really not right. It's not really ethical. If, yeah. Speaking of unethical, I heard an interview this morning, and an, uh, a guy that grew up, working in the trades, building houses, was interviewing, and he was a, now he's a kind of a bigger shot, and he was interviewing a um, home builder who builds homes all over the nation. That couldn't have been the Phil Cowan show, could it? Yes. I heard that too, it's a and, good and, one. And the guy said that um, what we have to pay to build a certain house in Mississippi is about $13,000 in government money that we have to give the government, you know, for fees and blah, 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 and all this, and taxes and all. That same building here in California costs to give to the government $170,000 per unit for that, you know, the same exact it's The building. same house, yeah, you just uh, transplant the house, the exact same house. So we have what I, I kind of am calling it a criminal organization that's running our government uh, because every house of that particular description at least hundred seventy thousand dollars to those buildings full of bureaucrats yeah and we all blame the we all blame the developers for high cost of housings but if they're having that we the developers don't pay that hundred seventy thousand dollars the homeowner does yes and, and yep and yeah. it, it may not be obvious to everybody but that kind of 
overhead, expense, regulation, and obstacles has been driving small businesses out of California for many decades. Yes. I, yeah, well, a, a small developer can't even pay that. A small developer has no way to pay that much money. Yeah. And so they're, they're simply out of the market. Yeah, I mean, so, so it's, I mean, not all developers are really great guys, but not all of them are really rotten people either. And so... I think I think what I heard, if I'm not mis if my memory hasn't failed again, was that if you had fewer than five residential units, that you didn't have this extra cost. But the point is, if you're doing those, that's, those are, in essence, for custom-built homes. I mean, it's if somebody says, "Oh yeah, we're going to put in this uh, project of 25 homes here and." saves money. You have the carpenters going from one to the next and then uh -huh. the wall borders going from one to the next and yep. in a sense it's more efficient or could be more efficient. Yeah, I mean it's just, I mean, I, I was absolutely stunned. I mean that's what I, now I understand when I walk around in the Capitol building why I see all these people walking around, they're all wearing a thousand dollars worth of clothes and um, wealthy secretaries might be having a a briefcase alone that's a thousand dollars and on top of her thousand dollars worth of clothes I mean th these people are in fact I think the California state legislature is the most highly paid legislature in the entire nation well I hope so I hope I win so I the most costly in many ways <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's it it's all it, we've all kind of put in this strange position now where we spend so much of our time and money funding the government and we actually don't get very much out of it except being told what to do and I'm not entirely sure that's what we have have government for is necessarily to tell us what to do but well, don't libertarians believe that everybody should be free to run their own life yeah as long as you're not hurting somebody else you're exactly. kind of pretty much free to run your own life and to not be interfered with and when you've got governments telling you how you can and can't work and then how you can and can't live and or you make it hard for someone to build a house like in my neighborhood just down the street there's going to build a develop they want to have a development right and this it's a three-story development with retail on the bottom and no parking for some reason oh no parking well now the, the reason that the developer wants no parking is so they can get it passed through the city hall faster but yep. even at absolute best it's a year before you can start building gee from proposal to actually start building, he's hoping at best it, it's, it can start building in a year. That, and that's that, amazing. And that time frame is money. Time is money. Yes. And sm again, small developers can't can't afford that, and so we're paying our you know our customers and our renters and our home buyers are paying all this extra money for these costs that we blame developers and landowners for when it's really. Uh, the politicians, I don't even want to blame bureaucrats anymore because bureaucrats jump simply do what politicians tell them yeah, to do. Yeah, they're, they're more or less following what their bosses tell them to do. So and if there, they are don't other, there are other costs that aren't necessarily obvious or <coughs> easy to define, but I know somebody who could no longer justify spending five hours commuting every workday. So, and it's a waste, of, it's a risk, it's a cost, it's a waste of resources. Mm -hmm. So he left his company on good terms and is now living in Idaho, Idaho Falls, where his commute's probably less than five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, that's a distinct reason, not the only reason by any means, but A, an additional reason as to why there's so many homeless here in, in the state of California which I believe we have half the entire nation. Yeah, something homeless. like that. It, it's crazy. It's a crazy number. And, I mean, a lot of it is the drug thing and, and then just Hollywood. Is well, the Hollywood, and California has nice weather, and so when people are, you come to California because you can actually sleep outside rather than in New York where you can't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of the people talk about the drug problem. It's, you know, drugs are being treated for pain, either emotional pain or physical pain. And so there, we have to, you have to help these these people, you can't just expect them to get off drugs. You yeah, have they're, to, they're they not have to do need, it alone. You <laughs> have help. to look at the root problems. Yeah, you have to look at the root problems. Either it's mm -hmm. physical problems and, and addiction because of physical pain, or it's addiction because of mental pain. Mm -hmm. Either way, we're going to have to actually deal with that pain. If we weren't overly optimistic libertarians, we'd probably be suffering in the same way. Well, well and I, I... Don't you think we you could make things better? I mean, what, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it if we did I wouldn't be running for office if I didn't think I could exactly. actually make things better. That's, and that's perfect. Oh. Yeah.
I'm, I hope you don't mind my uh, butting in. Uh, yes. What office are you running for? Uh, I actually qualified for the November ballot Tuesday oh. uh, for Assembly District 7. Oh, Assembly District 7. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what district that is. That's here, Sacramento. It's Sacramento, West Sac, Alberta. It's kind of out oh, that way. Oh, okay. All right. Great. I Alberta, live in Alberta. I've heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. So you might, if, if Kevin McCarty is your is your assemblyman, then you, it's my oh. district. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Alberta's about this size, and Rio Linda's about this size. Yeah, so it's, it's really it's, I, uh, small. It's and and, and 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 they're not districts, are, despite the redistricting commission districts are not drawn in any kind of reasonable form no you're right <laughs> <laughs> and so why the the boundaries are where they are it baffles me but but so it's not a clear definition of oh well it's just this area no yeah, it's some part of them are of, just long and thin and they they're just the strangest you got the strangest yeah. thing and you've got a little finger sticking out in one neighborhood <laughs> you're going why is that finger there why don't you just follow the freeway one side is their district and one side I, isn't i don't know why they don't do that <laughs> I, I have no idea why they why they well, do that well i if i was actually part of the redistricting commission process uh, the first time it went through and i could actually tell you why is because the the conditions that they have to work under they have a list of like i think it was 10 or 12 conditions that they have to work under. You, they have to, you know, racial identity, population, um, areas of impact, you know, common common areas, uh, oh, yeah, common like communities, that. cultural impact. And there's this whole laundry list of things. Okay. But but the, the racial and um, uh, demographic breakdowns actually cause what, what causes all these oh, little, okay. so, yeah, these I, little I, that makes sense. goofy things. Uh, but yeah. but the, the problem is they look too much at demographics based upon voting demographics, whether you're yeah. registered Republican or Democrat, and that should just be ignored completely. It should be, but I think that's one of the major um, yeah. um, indicators as to why they do that. Yeah, yeah because... But, but then, don't we have a major portion of the voting public that's um, registered... Decline no, to state. Decline to state. Yeah, it's exactly. about, it, depending upon where, where it is, it depends. It's about 40% is decline to state. That's very significant. It's, it's roughly, it depends. Like in my district, it's 50% Democrat, 20% wow. Republican. And, but in other districts, it's flipped. And so, but that's kind of the problem is they actually kind of look at that and say, okay, let's design a district to kind of suit this purpose. And, but then you create this condition where actually how I got in office is because no one else was running. He was unopposed, and so I, we did a last-minute write-in campaign. We oh. got 25 votes. Yay, we finished second, and so now we're on to the November ballot. Great. But the point, but I am not entirely sure I like that because then we have a lot of people who, a lot of places where no one was participating. If this kind of, yeah. if this kind of task hits my desk, then we have a serious problem because more, there are other people who should be running for office other than me, but yet it's when it hits my desk and I'm the one who has to do it. And that, for me, there's a problem with the whole system if this kind of task hits my desk. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, people are so busy watching TV or, or whatever they're doing, yeah. not paying attention out there what's actually going on. They're, well, it's hard, to, you know, it's hard to blame them for not paying attention when it, it doesn't even seem to matter when the, the legislator's gonna do what they want anyway. And also, um, against my will, I did not want to come up to this conclusion, but against my will, I've discovered that ABC, well, I call it ABC through PBS, leaving out McClatchy and New York Times and everything, they are programming people to be as dumb as possible. A German Shepherd is actually smarter than a lot of human beings out there because they're paying more attention to what's going on. And they misinformed. Watch all these, huh? Misinformed. If they were motivated, yeah. they'd do pretty well. Like, uh, I uh, was doing some house sitting at a friend of mine's house, and, and we watched kind of elevated uh, news programs and, and things that are kind of leading edge a little bit. But his, his younger sister was there, and she insisted on just watching standard ABC through PBS type news programs. And I, I felt like I was going back into the seventh grade or something, just watching their news. I mean, it was just empty. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, the, the news is awful. It's so simplistic. It, there's no depth to any news coverage at all. It's the simplistic and the most simple and the most simple analysis you can come up with. And there's absolutely no depth to it understanding. But Dan, if, if, if you really want to descend from there, you go to Facebook and see the posting by people who are suffering Trump derangement syndrome. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you think that uh, 
Donald J. Trump is the most evil person in the world. Why is that? I can think of two reasons for hating Donald Trump. One, he kept the Democrats from maintaining their political power. <coughs> Number two, he's in a position to investigate the corruption and crimes that have occurred in the hands of in the, politicians. In the D.C. swamp. <laughs> yes, exactly. And well, and I, I know there are people who are just uh, offended by his nature, his, his basic nature. And because I've had ex explanations with this where I've talked to people and I've gone through and said, look, look, historically speaking, Trump isn't that much different than any other president. He just kind of does things a little bit differently. But it's, it's that how he does things a little bit differently is actually what bothers people. It's, well, he's confrontational. Yes. He, doesn't, he just doesn't hear all the, the, the misinformation mm -hmm. about him that's broadcast over, what do they call it? Well, the, the Bushes just let all this stuff uh, fester away. But I remember I did a little bit of research. I call it um, summertime garden parties in the Hamptons where all these wealthy people that have been stealing from our... Um, national treasury for generations back into their families. They all get together and have these great garden parties in the Hamptons in the summertime laughing about how all the money they've stolen uh, for generations from our treasury uh, using a hundred different uh, you know, legislative tricks. Oh, there are all kinds of gimmicks. It's oh, well, how many of these people who entered Congress enter Congress poor and, are, and leave rich? <laughs> You know, it's like every single one of them. It, there's this, it's the very rare case where a congressperson enters Congress about the same economic status as where they leave. It, they've all come in there, they start with, you know, they start like average people kind of like, like us, and mm -hmm. they all end up with hundred million dollars and book deals for writing terrible books and all of these kinds of... Yeah, and having a side person write it and then you say that you wrote it so they can get yeah, all Yeah, ghostwriter, you pay the ghostwriter some money and you get a, you get a book that nobody, nobody buys but is somehow magically a bestseller. And with your big advance that you didn't earn, and it's all... I mentioned this on one of our shows uh, probably last year sometime, but I'll mention it again. My favorite Wall Street Journal cartoon shows a boy... And that's all the time we have, Lee. Oh, we're running out. I uh, uh, can't even like, give the punchline. No, I'm sorry, Lee. Thank time. you guys for appearing. If you... If you'd like to get more information, you can go to our website, libertariancounterpoint.com. Okay. You can watch us on YouTube and... Please, if you watch us on YouTube, click the appropriate buttons. We are now on Instagram and Twitter, so please follow us there. And thank you very much. I hear some music. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. You can handle that. Oh, man. Cool.